Hi guys, Wanda here, and I'm doing a gecko number five in my gecko series, and this is on a piece of sliced agate. It's gorgeous beauty, look at that. Absolutely stunning. It is um, provided by Yvonne M. Davenport Sparhawk, and she can be found on Facebook. I will link her information in the description. She's also having a giveaway, and she has sliced agate boxes available for $35, including shipping. So you should check that out and um, see if you're, you know, interested in getting those beautiful agate slices. She has all different colors, just gorgeous, and they're gorgeous with light behind them beautiful beautiful pieces of rock anyway so I traced this believe it or not right on to this sliced agate using carbon graphite paper that is just black Posca I wanted to see if it would work it's my first time ever really painting on it so we're going on the journey together but here you can see the um, carbon graphite paper transferred just fine to this surface. It has sort of a waxy texture, so it just it clung on really well there. So I'm going to use Posca to line just the outline, and then I'm going to be using the sliced agate background to my favor. This um, crystally looking quartz looking background. The white crackle so beautiful. It's like working on glass a little bit. So our gecko is going to be, it's the same uh, silhouette gecko that I always use. It's my favorite. <laughs> I love it a lot. So why change a good thing, right? So I'm using a Posca 1MR black. I'm also going to be using foil and some nail gel, some neon powder, pigment powder. A UV top coat and a five in one UV gel. It's um we're gonna use the blossom technique a bit like I did last night and um see what we come up with here. I may also add some gold, uh, Folk Art Treasure Gold 3081E. That's a possibility, not positive yet, but if you're grabbing your supplies, you might want to pull that one out just in case I decide to go for that. I love chunky geckos. They're so cute with their bellies. <laughs>
Okay. So now you know you can totally use Posca and graphite tracing paper on agate slices. And they are slick like glass. It's just like glass. So if you've never worked on glass before, don't be intimidated. It's not to, it's not very hard. I this is my first time. So I've worked on a like a mug before, but this is really great actually. A lot better. Then I was scared. I was scared of it. <laughs> so we're going to work with this image. I am going to be using some of my new foil. Uh, I'll be using this design. So in the background here, I'm going to make up some neon gel and apply that to the agate. Okay, so I am mixing up my colors look so different in video. It's actually magenta. <laughs> so I'm mixing up some of the um, gel colors here with the neon pigment. And I have used top coat beetles. Oh, gonna have to start over. I grabbed the wrong thing. <laughs> that won't work. I'm so glad that we looked. Okay, so what you're gonna do is not use uh, nail foil glue yet. <laughs> Oh my goodness, you guys, that was going to be a nightmare. Okay, so we need top coat. This stuff. <laughs> Beetle's top coat. And you need somewhere to mix it. So I like to save the backings of my mailing labels. They're, you know, like the back of stickers. They're big and it's a nice palette to mix on. If you don't have one of those, get yourself a nice sliced agate. Those work wonderful to mix paint on. You see that a lot in um, salons, actually. They'll use that to mix their paint. Okay, so I'm going to make seven colors. You want these far enough apart that they don't pull together. And you notice I'm just doing a drip of each color. And then I'm going to do a separate over here for some white. Okay, then you're going to need a white gel or something to color your something to color your uh, top coat white. You can use chalk, pigment powder, pearl powder, but it needs to be a cloudy white is what we're aiming for. So I'm going to put down just a tiny bit of white next to that. Like, not not much at all. That's probably too much. And then for these colors, it's not much either. Just a little scoop. That's probably more pigment than we needed. And then you just blend until it's smooth consistency. And I'm going to go for purple next. Okay, I'm going to do the white next so that you can see how I mix that and then you get the idea. So for the white, we just want it milky. I'm just doing a cloudy white basically. So you mix it with this clear. I had a little bit of purple in there so now it's a little bit of pink. 
but hopefully that'll work. We'll see. Okay, so I'm going to mix up my other colors and I'll be back. Okay, so now that I've mixed up my colors, I'm going to start laying them inside of the outline. All right, let's go traditional rainbow. So I'm going to start with the red-ish. <laughs> They're neon, so red is relative, right? And I'm going to start up here around the face with that color. And the idea is I want these to be transparent so you can see the beautiful stone underneath. but yet be enough color that um, it's nice and vivid. So I'm going right out to my black outline. And then I'm gonna go straight into orange here. And I'm blending the two together here right at this area And then I'm going to wipe my brush and go into yellow. I'm going to lay that down first and then blend the color. That way I don't um, contaminate the yellow I have on my palette over here. And I'll wipe my brush and grab some more yellow. So pretty. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. Oops, sorry. Need to make sure. Oops, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. All right. Green. I'm going to kind of follow the color back out here with some yellow. Orange.
some of the red on the toes. Okay, the blue. And then right here, I'm going to blend the two together. Try to be careful with bubbles. When you're mixing, it kind of introduces bubbles a bit. So just be aware of that. If you see them, move them kind of to the side or something. Torching doesn't seem to work well on top coat. trash day. You can hear my trash man. I'm sorry. The um, waste sanitation person. Sanitation technician. And then purple. I gotta show you guys how little of this I'm using. Remember, it was just a drop of each color. And it's still mostly there. So it really takes very little. And then I'm trying to blend them colors right here. If you need to wipe your brush and then come back at it. Okay, and then magenta. Kind of like a rainbow tie-dye. Okay, then the red.
through the rainbow. Yellow. green and now we're getting back onto the dark color agate the red and orange show up pretty good over here but I don't know what they're going to do when they're dry so hopefully they'll show up. Anyways, we're gonna go into blue. Yeah, you can't see that one. I'm gonna add a little bit of white into that, just so that maybe we can see the colors. And then purple. Also adding white into that. And it's not the white white, it's the milky white that I made, that I'm adding. Magenta. Red, then orange. And we'll end it with yellow here. Wow, that is so cool. Oh, you guys, I'm so pleased with this. Okay, now at this point, we're going to cure this. Now, I've never cured on an agate, but I saw Yvonne do foil on hers, so I'm thinking this will be fine. So cross your fingers. I'm going to use the flashlight just to do a gentle cure first so it doesn't get too hot too fast. So cool. Oh, I got to see this. I don't know what it's going to do, but. Oh my gosh, you guys. <gasps> got to get a little black light for behind them. Look at this. How cool is that? Oh, again in the club. <laughs> I'm crazy. Oh, this is so pretty. Thank you, Yvonne. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So gorgeous. You know, you could just stop there. 
But no, wait, there's more. <laughs> but wait, there's more. See, we're going to do this everywhere. Okay, now the foil glue comes into play. And I'm just going to add a little to my palette. Use the same brush I was just using. Start the head. And I'm going to go all the way down with the foil glue. Okay, guys, I'm back. I cured, I did nail foil glue all the way down, cured it for a whole cycle. And when I put my foil down on it, I put it on only half of it. So <laughs> we'll have to see here if I can fix it. And let's do this side. Try to line it up just a bit. Oops. I think that'll come off with alcohol, I'm hoping. Okay. Let's try the theory, test the theory to clean the stone with alcohol. <laughs> so good theory. So if you have a boo-boo with glue or top coat, you can clean it up pretty easily actually with a bit of alcohol. And then take It's a lint-free or low lint paper towel with some alcohol on it just to buff out the glue spots. Okay. Take a peek here. Not too bad. I had a little wrinkle there in my foil with my light concerning, but not the end of the world. That will disappear when we do our top coat. So I'm going to add some rhinestones. lot easier to deal with. So I'm going to use top coat since I'm going to be applying top coat everywhere. When I apply the top coat I'm going to be covering the line that I did. You know the black Posca line. So on the edges here, you can get close with the brush. You just want to be careful with this big brush, okay? It's best to do it from a palette or a dish, something of the sort. Anyways, when you need to get around the edges, do so with care. And this is just top coat that I'm applying here.
So go ahead and apply your top coat throughout. Okay, I have my top coat applied and I'm gonna try to show you without making it run. See how it's all glossy there? Okay, it's still wet. And I'm putting the rhinestones onto the feet and the eyes while it's wet. Killing two birds. That's a terrible saying. <laughs> Ooh, sorry about that. I don't know what that even means. Killing two birds. Accomplishing more at once. Time management. <laughs> Oh, I need to put littler ones. Oh, I don't think I did that arm. <laughs> nope. Certainly need to add some top coat there. And on our little toes, I gotta switch to a smaller rhinestone for these. Okay, back to rhinestones. Go down a size here. This tool makes it easy to drop rhinestones in. It's like a combo of static and wax, so it picks it up really easily. Okay, and I also want to do the eyes. Okay, I have these two rhinestones. They're kind of like an... <laughs> They're like an AB facet, so they have um, Aurora Borealis on it, but they're black, so it's really cool looking. I think those are going to be the eyeballs. And we have one groovy gecko here. I love this. All right, come down for a look-see, and then Give it a little cure so it doesn't. Oh, it's cool, 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 cool. And then I'm going to pop it into the light for 60 seconds. Make sure it's all cured. All right, we're all cured. The magic of editing. <laughs> But you guys, I can't tell you how excited I am. That is so gorgeous. And these agate slices are amazing. So now I'm gonna do something cool. I'm gonna turn off the lights, though it is daytime, but I'm gonna turn them off. And I'm gonna turn on the black light underneath it. Let's see what we get here. Wow. 
Really, really love that. So there we have it. Agate slices from Santorini's by Yvonne. Yvonne M. Davenport Sparhawk on Facebook. And the link will be in the description so you can pick up some of these agate slices to work on. Amazing, y'all. Amazing. Thanks for hanging out with me. And I'll see you again soon.